and then you go and then they start to go and you stop and then oh, they yeah. stop and then you go yeah and, and then they go just, like this <laughs> yeah so you're just What's up everybody, this is Seth Marchant and Paul Clem from the Home Team Brokers coming to you from beautiful Portland, Oregon. If you're new to our channel, Living in Oregon, we show you what it's like to eat, sleep, play, work, all the pros and cons of living in Oregon. And in this case, we're going to give you 11 things you need to know when you're moving to Portland, Oregon. And one bonus, hit the subscribe button, tap the bell, make sure you get notified each time we drop a new video. We get people reaching out to us all the time. Uh, that want to move around Portland and we always love to hear from you so give us a call send us a text shoot us an email you can even click the link in the description to schedule a zoom with us no matter how you get in touch with us we've got your back when it comes to moving to Portland Oregon all right so we are here at 10 barrel in Portland Oregon as you can see not a warm day uh, it, it is a sunny day though, so uh, not all the myths about Portland are true, right? Yeah. And so th that's going to kick us off with uh, our first thing on our list of 11 things you want to know when you're moving to Portland, Oregon. The first thing we're going to talk about here is the weather. So the weather in Oregon, obviously there's a stigma. Uh, people talk about the rain, the overcast. It really doesn't rain as much as, as it kind of gets the stigma for. You know, and, and the rainfall actually um, really isn't a whole lot more than a lot of other states throughout the country. Um, but it does rain here a little bit more, so it is something that you kind of got to get used to. Uh, you're probably not going to be buying an umbrella if you move here. You probably won't see too many people carrying around an uh, umbrella. In fact, that's probably an easy way to uh, out yourself yeah, if, if you're it, not from around here. If you want to spot a transplant or somebody who's not from Portland walking around with an umbrella, there you go. There's your clue. So. When it comes to the weather here, uh, you just have to understand that it does rain sometimes. There are some periods where it does rain for a couple days, maybe even a week. And so as Portlanders, we just uh, the way that we deal with that is, is we just have activities, we have things to do. There's things to do when, when it's uh, raining outside. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's probably, you know, some truth in every stereotype. And, you know, it's no secret that in this part of the country, in Portland, Seattle, places like that, it rains a lot. Um, and, it, and it definitely does, you, you know, d definitely um, probably a little more than, uh, a, you know, most cities around the country as far as a national average. Uh, but one of the things that it seems like, you know, brings people to the Portland area is that we get all four seasons of the year and you know part of that deal is just taking the good with the bad um, now the rain probably is a little bit overstated um, something around 35 you know 40 uh, inches a year in rain and it can really vary for example in 2017 uh, there was 52 uh, inches of rain uh, on record um, and I think it was 2019 there was something like 32 inches uh, of rain uh, on record so uh, it's a pretty big range you know every year is going to be a little bit different but you know one of the best parts about living here is the warmer months and the sunshine and for the record you know it's January 23rd right now and it's a bluebird day it's freezing well not quite freezing it's it's cold out here but you know you, you definitely get some some breaks of sun but you also get a week two weeks you know stretch at a time that it's just totally overcast, raining every day. It can definitely get miserable, and depending on where you're coming from, you know, probably can be a, a pretty big shock, I would think. And, and so, you know, the people who uh, kind of live here, were born and raised here, like Seth and I, um, you know, kind of have our own ways of dealing with it, and we just kind of know what we're getting into, you know, once the fall comes, and then kind of really through early spring, you're going to get majority days of overcast, but you know there there are things that you can do just in terms of staying active. Um, it's really never that cold, like too cold to get outside, go for a walk, do a hike, uh, or do you know do do some biking. A number of the things that uh, you know this area offers. Yeah, you still see people if it's raining, they're still out walking their dog, going for a jog. You know, and it's not like that like real big or like strong like powerful stinging rain. 
You know, it's it, so the rain that we get here. It, if you do want to go outside, it's, it's not the type of rain that's really prohibitive for you go, going outside and going for a jog or a walk or something like that. So, yeah. All in all, I mean, the rain is really not that bad here. It, it, it is overstated, like you said, and uh, the big benefit that you get with the rain, you know, if you're somebody that's coming from like the Southwest or, or a California, is it's very green here. That's the first thing you're gonna notice if you're coming from like an Arizona or a California, is just how green it is. And you don't get that green without the rain, obviously. So it's, that. I mean, that's the trade-off. Yeah, and it's more of a constant drizzle, honestly. Um, and, and really we're talking from kind of middle to late fall to early to mid spring where you're getting a majority of that rain and you know every once in a while you get a pretty big downpour that's going to be something that's more common for uh, the south the southwest you know there's parts of the country I remember being in New Orleans one time and it was 90 95 degrees outside and clouds rolled in and it you know it felt like you stepped into a shower um, so you don't get that kind of rain here. It's more of a constant drizzle. Um, and so, it, you know, again, it, it doesn't really deter you from, you know, kind of doing the things that you want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and if we're talking about the weather overall, um, it tends to be pretty mild. It doesn't get too cold, doesn't get too hot. You have some anomalies, but you're probably looking at high 30s to low 40s in the coldest you know parts of the year December January um, up to probably high 70s low 80s uh, in, in the hottest parts of the year like yeah. like in August early September so you get a little bit of 90s here and there we yeah. actually had a record yeah la last year it got up to 116 was it 116 116 wow yeah I had come yeah. from Scottsdale a week before that where it was 116 and then coming back to Portland was 116 a week later and uh um, yeah, it was pretty unbelievable, but you know, we get heat waves every year, D definitely hit 100 degree days, uh, but you know, it's, it's not four months, six months of yeah. just unbearable heat. Yeah. So all in all, I think the weather is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you know, depending on where you're coming from, a lot of people come here for the weather, for the seasons changing, you know, for the blooming in the spring, you know, the, the summertime and all the activities that you can get out and do, um, you know, the leaves changing in the fall and then, you know, in the summer or in the winter, you know, it's a little bit dead, but you get some snow, you get some frost, you know, it's beautiful. So, yeah. All right. On to our next thing on the list. I'm going to take a drink for this one. <laughs> Common thing we hear is Portland burning. And uh, I don't know, is Portland burning? <laughs> We're downtown Portland right now, for the record. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Ten Barrel, the Ten Barrel location at, in downtown Portland. Well, I think that just kind of depends on who you ask. Uh, there's probably some news that you can watch that uh, might exaggerate it, and uh, there's some news that you might watch that might downplay it. Um, but for the most part, kind of some of the stuff that you heard about in the news was a, a focused to a very, very small area. A handful of blocks and uh, it, it might have been in a few other areas from from time to time but overall it was just right downtown and a couple different blocks is, is where a lot of that crazy stuff was going on um, so all in all is Portland burning no it's not burning um, you probably could have find, found something burning you know a year ago and yeah like literally bur like literally burning <laughs> yeah you know everything gets a little bit exaggerated um, for sure especially with the news and you know for us being here you know during you know those times when you know you saw riots buildings burning things like that on the news um, it was definitely noticeable you know some of the unrest that was going on you know it wasn't a secret and it was you know it got bad there for a second you know we can't sugarcoat it Portland has a long history of protests the occasional rioting you know dating back to the, to the uh, early 20th century and so, you know, some cities are known for certain things. Chicago's known for pizza. You know, Portland, you know, to some degree is kind of known for its, uh, you know, social and community activism, uh, which at times can present itself as protests and, you know, on a very rare occasion, um, you know, can turn into some riots, breaking windows, theft, things like that. I don't think you're going to find too many people in your day-to-day -day life here in Portland that really condone that sort of thing. Um, regardless of your views or your stances on, you know, uh, kind of what was going on or, or what you saw in the news, um, I, th I think the moral of the story is it's really died down. 
and it was more of a flash in the pan than something that is just the norm, you know, in terms of day to day life here. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, a lot of it was just kind of the the uh, the, the loud. Uh, you know, minority. They're just a small group of people ma making a lot of noise. And if, if you are somebody that's thinking about moving uh, to Portland and you're coming from out of state and you've never been here, you have no idea what it's like, you know, and you're, you're kind of concerned, you know, with some of that stuff that you hear, a lot of people that move to Portland um, are, are moving around the metro area. Yeah. Know, they're yeah. In the burbs, in other that's words. They're not moving downtown, which is where all of that stuff was taking place. Again, within really just a couple of blocks. So most people that are moving here that are concerned about that, they, they're not even ever going to see it. And for the people that already that live here, you know, most of us didn't see it either. Um, just because, again, it was it was a couple of blocks, you know. And I, I live out in the burbs. You know, I live about 20 minutes from downtown. And pretty much anywhere you're 20 minutes from downtown, uh, you, you just you wouldn't even know it was there if you didn't have the news. I live 10 minutes from downtown in Southwest Portland, and you know, you walk outside your front door. You didn't hear sirens, you didn't hear glass breaking. Um, there was no sign of, of any of that stuff. And, and that's the case for, you know, anywhere you would live in the surrounding communities, you know, from downtown. Like Seth said, it was it was concentrated to a very small area. And again, it's, you know, it's completely died down, so. Yeah, so if, if you're thinking about moving to Portland and that's one of your concerns, uh, it's, it's probably, you'd have to kind of look hard and, and, and far to find that kind of stuff going on now. And, and you're probably not going to be living near nearby anyways, too. So um, definitely overhyped. So is that something you should be concerned about? Eh, probably not. No. It hasn't affected any of us. I mean, it's, you know. No. So the next thing on our list, things you should know if you're moving to Portland, is Portland is the most bike-friendly city in the country. We have the second most bike trails uh, of any city in the country. Um, pretty much uh, any street in Portland proper and uh, in the surrounding suburbs uh, have bike lanes. Um, there's even these kind of green rectangles uh, before every stoplight uh, designated for bikes at a stoplight. Um, so whether or not that is something you're into, whether or not you're uh, you know, planning on biking for fun or to commute, it's definitely something you're gonna see a lot. So Portland is bike friendly, yes. So if you're a biker, great. Now if you're a driver, that's a little bit of a different story. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, if, if you're a driver, I, I, I don't know that uh, all, all the drivers are the biggest fans of, of bikers around here. I, th I think the biggest complaint is that the, the bikers wanna act like a car and, and, you know, and be a car, but uh, they don't always wanna follow the rules of a car. You know, they don't, they don't wanna follow the same rules that cars do. You know, they'll run stop signs, stuff like that. Um, you know, while, while driving on the road. But uh, all in all, it's it's almost kind of like, um, you know, the riots and stuff like that. I mean, you just, you just don't really see it too much. It's not something you bump into too much. If you have a particular commute where there's a lot of bikers, you, you might see it a little bit. But for the most part, just going around Portland, uh, you just, you don't bump into too many bikers. But it is super bike friendly though. So if you are somebody that likes to bike and even, you know, just, Casually, I mean, I've taken my bike downtown uh, Portland a few times, and yeah. uh, and there's great. there's some really great trails uh, going all the way down the waterfront, and then over like maybe the steel bridge, and then coming back up. There's a couple loops that will take you right along the Willamette River. You can go over a few bridges. It's it's really cool. There's a lot of great biking places around here. Yeah, if you plan on being a, on a bike at any point while you're in Portland, you know. You know, you'll find this is definitely a good spot. Again, rated as you know the the most bike friendly city in the country. But there's going to be times where you know you're going to find yourself going 20 miles below the speed limit because you're on a road. You know that maybe doesn't have a bike lane or a shoulder, or you know the biker just wants to be in the street and act like a car, and it's holding up traffic. And I mean that can get a little frustrating at times, but. Uh, I guess it's just something that, you know, you, you don't run into all the time, but you see often enough just to kind of accept it. All right, so next on our list, parks. Yeah, we got a lot of them. We have a lot of parks. It's, uh, it's, it's tough to go very far without bumping into a park around here. Yeah, uh, Portland proper has over 10,000 acres of city parks. Um, and the biggest park in Portland uh, is Forest Park. I think it's, a, it's about... Uh, uh, twice the size of Central Park in New York City, and it's completely undeveloped. Uh, you, you'll see some trails that are like leveled, 
and gravel um, and some trails like a mile in have porta potties and things like that so you know it, it's it's very friendly you know for like kind of a casual hike and things like that uh, but I mean you're you're in the woods um, and there's other places in Portland. right from downtown Portland yeah well it's 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 basically in yeah. downtown Portland I mean it's you know as the crow flies it's probably a quarter mile you know, just uh, kind of due north from us right now. So, you know, there's other places like Mount Tabor, for example, you know, very similar, a little more developed. It's like picnic areas and things like that. But, you know, pretty much anywhere in Portland that you live, you can, you can, you know, you, you can get a, a legitimate hike, you know, maybe 15 minutes from your doorstep, sometimes a five minute drive from your doorstep. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it seems like the a lot of the suburban areas, the kind of the suburbs and communities surrounding Portland have followed suit too. Yeah, there's tons of parks in the suburbs. I mean, there's a lot of places that you can live in the suburbs where, like Paul said, you can just walk out, step outside your front door, and there's a path just feet away, you know, just just right next to your house that that will go for miles and miles um, through other neighborhoods and through parks, and so there's just no into the amount of parks not just in, in portland but around in the suburbs as well too with lots of paths for biking walking uh, we do have the world's i think is the world's or the country's smallest park here yeah that's right i think it's <laughs> called mills end that's right uh, yeah, so it's it's, yeah. it's right downtown portland so it's about this big just east this way uh, and it's actually right in the middle of uh nato parkway which is kind of the the main street, you know, like First Street, basically, uh, next to Waterfront Park, and yeah, it's uh, it's got a diameter of maybe two feet. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's a photo opportunity. Probably, if you're if you're somebody who's living in Portland, probably don't go see it or think about it too much. But for no. the for the for the tourists, uh, it's, yeah. you know, it's definitely a photo opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> and we wouldn't have those parks without the without the rain either, too. So I mean, that's yeah. The weather makes the, these parks and. Again, we do have some of the best parks, um, really throughout the state, actually. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think Portland, you know, in terms of kind of the lifestyle and the culture, um, you know, the, the city caters to uh, a healthy, active lifestyle. Whether that's biking, yeah, you know, whether that's hiking, you know, whether that's just being able to get out, walk your dog, uh, or go for a walk, you know, in you know any of the dozens of, of parks that you would have access to, pretty much anywhere you live. Yeah. Yeah, and that, I mean that's it, that's that's a good point. They, they definitely do promote a healthy, active lifestyle, and like I said, you'll see people out walking their dog or jogging in the rain. I mean, the, the rain just doesn't slow people down here. No. All right, next on our list, taxes. Let's talk about taxes. Yeah. Let's talk about taxes. It's, it's a little bit different here in Oregon. So first thing, uh, we don't have any sales tax, right? So. If, uh, you know, if and there's, what did you say, there's nine states that don't have sales tax? Something like that. Throughout the country? Yeah. So, um, I think all the surrounding states do, right? California, yep. Idaho, Washington. So, people Nevada, coming from the surrounding yeah. states are always, you know, so they, they, they kind of know what's up. But uh, it's nice not to have sales tax and just to pay that price that you see, you know, listed when you're when you're buying something. Um, but that is, that is you know, made up in part by, uh, we have higher property taxes and then higher state income taxes as well yeah the, the state income tax is really the offset uh, you know some some states don't have a state income tax like Washington uh, for example directly to the north um, so you know you don't you don't see that taxation um, on a you know purchase by purchase basis uh, but there is that state income tax and so you know it's it's you kind of got to you know, take one to get the other, or vice versa. Um, and property taxes probably uh, fall somewhere about in the middle of uh, um, the, the national average. Uh, but the Portland metro area, kind of the tri-county area of Multnomah County, which is the highest, um, Clackamas County and Washington County, um, you know, are, are, are definitely going to be higher across the board. Um, you know, than, than most of the state probably. Yeah. Yeah. So taxes, that's one thing that you're going to want to know when you're coming here. Um, might not affect you know, uh, your decision to, to come here, but uh, it's, it's definitely something you want to know. Yeah, and, and I don't know um, how it is in, in other states necessarily, but you know, there's not just one uh, rate for a county. Um, you know, it, it depends on what tax jurisdiction you fall in. Um, so depending on you know, kind of uh, your proximity to 
schools, parks, different infrastructure, um, and, and just kind of different amenities, um, you know, in a particular county, your taxes might end up being a little bit higher. So in a lot of ways, you pay for what you get. Um, you know, if there's less development going on, um, if there's less schools or maybe kind of worse schools, that, you know, wh wh whatever it may be, you know, your taxes might reflect that uh, and be a little bit lower. Whereas if you're paying a little bit higher taxes, you know, you're probably in an area with a, a higher concentration of wealth, more amenities like parks and walkways and sidewalks or projects, things that are being um, uh, built um, and, and maybe better schools, things like that too. So uh, it's, it's not just the case where you know, well, if you're in Washington County, which is kind of to the west southwest of the Portland area, you're automatically going to pay two thirds less in Multnomah County. Um, it, it really depends on where in the county you're located as well. So, you know, that's one of those things that you know when you're searching for a home, you know, you just got to tell us what areas uh, you're interested in, what neighborhoods, and then we can give you a little more insight on kind of you know what the property taxes look like in that particular neighborhood. Yeah. And no uh, sales tax online either, too. I've, I've seen people ask that before. Like, yeah. hey, do you, if you're shopping online, though, do you, do you have to pay sales tax now? So that's a nice thing. Yep. All right, next on the list, food. Yeah, I mean. Dining, restaurants. The, the, the culinary culture uh, um, is, is huge in Portland. Um, you know, it's, it's probably something that if, if you've been looking at moving to Portland, um, or considering relocating here or you're moving here for work you've probably come across you know how many great restaurants we have and, and kind of how big the food scene and the food culture is in Portland um, one of the things that you may not have come across is Portland is the most vegan friendly city in the country um, and so you know take that for what it's worth that might be something that benefits you or not but you're gonna see pretty much anywhere you go out to eat, you're gonna see some vegan or you know vegetarian uh, offerings on the menu. Yeah, yeah, and it, on the opposite end of that spectrum, if you're a meat eater, this is actually a pretty good place to get meat too, because yeah. we have a lot of rural farming communities that surround Portland, and uh, just about every town has a farmers market. That you know, there's there's tons of uh, butchers and. Um, you can, you know, some people will buy, you know, like a quarter of a cow or half a cow or something like that. And, you know, you can get um, a free range, you know, grass fed, uh, you know, cow, um, you know, yeah. whereas for, for a good price, you know, whereas, you, you know, you, you can't find that in other cities too. So we've got the farmer's markets. Um, it is a foodie town, obviously. Uh, and then aside from the food too, great wine and beer. Yeah. And, and really probably that combination that that trifecta wine beer and food Portland or Oregon is probably one of the top states if, if you put all three of those together than really anywhere else in the country yeah. I'm, I'm sure California will have something to say about that they, New York might have something to say about New that. York yeah um, but we've got so many great breweries if, if you've never heard of Ten Barrel um, they were started 05 06 or something like that yeah out in Bend Central, Central Oregon, Oregon. And uh, they were bought out by Anheuser Busch maybe four or five years ago or something like that. Yep. So I, I don't know. You might see Ten Barrel, you know, on the East Coast or you know, all throughout the country. And there are breweries that uh, you'll see their beer all throughout the state, and, and in some cases throughout the country. So Oregon creates some of the best craft beers, and then also some of the best wine as well too in the Willamette Valley. We've got a great wine country here. Yeah, yeah it's not Napa or Sonoma, yeah. but uh, Pinot Noir is what we're known for. Yeah. 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 So I think uh, you know if you're a foodie, if you if you like good beer, craft beers, if you like wine, uh, that's going to be a huge plus for you. The the Willamette Valley is um, just an hour away from here, so wine country is just a, a, w a real quick trip. The breweries are all over the place, and a lot of the good restaurants are sort of concentrated downtown. But over time, they've they've kind of expanded and spread out a little bit, and you're getting some of those those really good restaurants that are opening new locations or you know in the suburbs surrounding Portland as well and then we've got food carts yeah yeah I mean I kind of added on to that which is really unique to Portland you know the kind of the quality and the abundance of great food and you know great beer and wine is there but 
uh, food carts are a big part of the food scene and the food culture overall. Um, in particular in Portland proper, but more and more out into the suburbs, you have what are called food cart pods. And uh, again, they're called food carts here, uh, not food trucks. You know, some parts of the country, some cities, you know, they're called food trucks yeah. for whatever reason, but we refer to them as food carts. I'm not sure exactly why, but, you know, so... I guess they usually are trucks that they're in. Yeah, I mean, you know, so I mean, if you're moving to Portland and, and you want to seem like a local right away, food cart is uh, what they're referred to. But, you know, some of the top restaurants in Portland either started as food carts or have, yeah. you know, uh, added to their operation, you know, with a, an offering via a food cart, and it might be like a little bit of a less expensive or limited menu, um, but, you know, it's really cool. It's not just like, you know, exclusively little taco trucks or burgers, you know, things like that. You get a huge variety, yeah. um, all, all kinds of, you know, kind of categories and genres of food, um, you know, really from all over the world. Yeah, 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 a lot of food that maybe you might not, like, find other places like like a sushi burrito or something something like that yeah a lot of good fusion yeah a lot of good fusion stuff yeah, yeah. so I, I know probably that's not a consideration for most people when they're moving but when you when you do move somewhere new uh, you always want to know like oh, where's the food at okay where, where am I gonna where are we gonna be eating and so aside from the restaurants too we do have um, we do have great grocery stores they're, they're, they're kind of um, we've, we've got new seasons We've got uh, Market of Choice. Yeah, we've whole, got the Safeways, a lot of Whole Foods. Trader, whole a lot foods. of Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's is a big, yeah. So, um, and they're kind of spread out sporadically um, throughout uh, the Portland metro area. You won't find a Trader Joe's everywhere. Um, and I guess I do know some people that it is important uh, to be close to like a particular type of grocery store. It seems like you know, like we we're kind of alluding to. Uh, Help, you know, having a healthier lifestyle, being a part of the culture, um, you know, as far as just kind of being active and staying active yes, and everything. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you know. That's, that's how we do it. Everyone around Portland likes to enjoy their, uh, their yeah. noon beers, but, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think it, it does seem like it's important to a lot of people, whether in, you know, directly kind of in Portland proper or in the surrounding suburbs, uh, to have access to, you know, kind of healthier options, um, you know, a lot of a lot of good fresh produce, organic options, um, things like that, and you know, so anywhere you would decide to live in Portland, um, definitely, you know, has that sort of offering. Uh, offering uh, farmers markets too. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You got farmers markets in every every city. Yeah. Um, not always year round. Not not year round. Uh, you know, with the weather, but. And uh, some are better than others. Yeah, but a lot of them too. So you can. I mean, I, I go to maybe around where I live. I'll go to two or three different ones. So long story short. Portland, Oregon, uh, and, and the Portland metro area um, is home to uh, over 50 vegan-only restaurants. Um, and That's a lot. Yeah. And, I didn't and know that. Probably hundreds more that offer like a really, you know, kind of uh, vegan-friendly menu, you know, and there's probably a range of kind of what that looks like. but. There's a lot of great meat. There's a lot of great barbecue. There's a lot of great sandwich places and so a couple paleo places. If, yeah, if you're a paleo person. Yeah, so you know, if you're a meat lover, a meat eater, you know, you got plenty of options too. All right, next on the list. What are we talking about? Traffic. Traffic. Yeah. Yeah, you can That's... probably hear a little bit of it in the background here. Um, there's a freeway just over there. Um, don't underestimate it. <laughs> that is something that you will want to account for when you come here. So, especially if you're coming from like in LA, we, we don't have the four, five, six lane highways here. Uh, so I-5, our, our major interstate, uh, is largely three lanes. You've got some uh, four lanes here and there for some uh, on and off ramps, but it's it's largely three lanes. And uh, Portland is, is growing. A lot of people, more people are moving here than, than moving away. And uh, it is a little bit congested in some areas. So that is one thing that you will want to account for is how far away, if you're driving to work, if you have a commute, how far away you're gonna live. And if you map that, say, on a Saturday, and you're just you know, checking directions without traffic, you know, a 20-minute drive without traffic in Portland, it could be a 45-minute drive. So traffic can be pretty bad here in some places. Yeah, I mean, Portland's uh, the smallest major city on the West Coast, so somebody relocating here, um, if, if it's from a smaller town or from, you know, uh, one of the bigger metro areas, you're probably assuming that the traffic isn't as bad, and um, 
Well, the point being is, again, don't underestimate the traffic. Um, you definitely want to take that into account in terms of where you're working, where you're commuting to, and where you're living. For some context, Portland has been rated as having the 17th worst traffic in the country, uh, but we're the 25th largest metro area in the country. So, you know, our, our traffic, it, you know, is worse, um, you know, on that scale relative to the size and population of the city. Um, a lot of the a lot of the jobs, uh, uh, especially that people relocate uh, here for, are uh, on the west side. So you have, um, you know, like what you would call the Silicon Forest, a lot of tech jobs, a lot of startups. You have Intel, which employs like, what, 20,000 people, something like that. You have Nike, of course, um, but kind of the most quintessential or uh, prototypical uh, Portland life or lifestyle you can find probably in Southeast and, and Northeast Portland. So, you know, if you want to kind of, you know, take in everything that Portland has to offer and you're looking in, in that part of the city, but you're working on the west side of the river, um, you could be looking at an hour commute both ways. So yeah. there's a trade-off there for sure, potentially, depending on what you're looking for. But, you know, don't assume that if you're, you know, eight to 10 miles away, that it's going to take 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, again, it could, could be you know, well over an hour potentially. Yeah, yeah, so, and we can consult you on that too. We've lived here our, our entire lives. We're pretty familiar with the traffic from 26 to 84, you know, to 217. 405, yeah. 405, parts of 205 are bad, you know, and there's just parts of I-5 that are bad. So we can kind of show you where those bad spots are and, and what you want to avoid too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so three lanes in a lot of uh, places. Some places two lanes too. So um, you, you kind of got to get used to the, the traffic and the drivers here, especially if you're coming from like California. Like people in California do not drive the same way as people in Oregon or Washington for that matter. People in Oregon or Washington are a lot more passive. I think people are more aggressive um, in California. And uh, my grandpa one time pointed out, I never really thought about this, but he said, you know, people in Oregon are competitive drivers. Mm. They, they, they want to compete with you. It's, it's the weirdest thing. So if like if you drive next to somebody and, and you go to like pass them or something, they'll speed up. Yeah, I've probably done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just it's just a weird thing. It's like a weird phenomenon. And you also don't really have a, like, the concept of like passing lanes here in Oregon as well. You know, people have, when you have three lanes, the way that people, Oregonians look at it is uh, the right lane is, is maybe the lane to get off. The middle lane is the cruising lane, and then they think of the left lane kind of as like the fast lane. So if like I'm going above the speed limit, I should go in the left lane, not necessarily the passing lane. Like I should only go in the left lane if I'm going to pass somebody. There's there's not really kind of that concept here. Whereas a lot of other you know parts of the country, that's you know that's how people drive. So yeah, it it leads to maybe a little bit of road rage. Like for example, you'll see somebody pull onto a highway and there will be nobody in the center lane they just go straight to the left lane yeah. there's nobody in either lane they just go over to they're like I'm I'm a left lane fast driver so they just automatically go to the left lane so you kind of got to get used to that as well too so you know if you're a fast driver if you're a road rager it's gonna take maybe a little uh, adjustment when you when you come to uh, to Oregon yeah um, other little things too like uh, people don't use turn signals too much around here I was in Missouri one time getting a ride from somebody and, and this guy told me, he's like, hey, everywhere you go, you, you got to use your turn signal. Or so you're getting pulled over, mm -hmm. like every time. And, and you yeah. know, that was just, you know, his perspective. But that's not a thing around here. Like, you don't get pulled over for not using your turn signal in Oregon. So yeah. the traffic and the, the drivers are, are probably a little bit of an adjustment as well. Yeah, there's some stereotypes. Um, slow, lazy, yeah. um, competitive. I hadn't heard that, but it makes a lot of sense. Um, and the uh, speed limits too. You can, you might have to get used to that because it's a lot of 55 around. Here. Yeah. Um, there's also a stereotype. If you've seen the uh, the show Portlandia, they actually did a skit on this, and I've been a, I've you know been involved in this exact circumstance. I don't know, probably a dozen times in my life, where you get to a four-way stop, uh, <laughs> right. or a two-way stop, but you're you're yeah. one of two cars, and you get waved on, and then you wave them on. And then they wave you on, and you can go back and forth several times before somebody goes. So, and then you go, and then they start to go, and you stop, and then oh, they yeah. stop, and then you go. Yeah, and then, and then they go like this. <laughs> yeah. So, you just so here's a tip: when somebody waves you on at a at a stop sign in Portland, just go. Yeah. Just go, because you you'll be playing that game. For, be opening opening up a can of worms there that you yeah. don't want. 
Yeah, that's a, yeah. It took me a while to learn that one, but to, and you can just go because people around here are a little bit more passive. You know, they're they're, they're not aggressive like California drivers. So they're if, if they're usually going to default to at stops uh, to waiting for you. Yeah. You know? And and if you wave them them on, you know, they're going to wave you on, and you're you're going to play that game all day. So just go. Yeah. I mean, and and the last point on traffic is you know, and I know we talked about this, but. As a driver, you definitely have to account for the bikers, for sure. You know, bikers have the right of way. They have, you know, special lanes. Although they like to drive, you know, right in the in the street sometimes too. But, you know, that can definitely factor in, especially as you're driving around neighborhoods. Um, some neighborhoods, like in Southeast Portland, uh, have throughways that are for bikes specifically. So there's um, there's a lot of side streets that are blocked off for car access and it's local access only for cars how that gets enforced i don't know but um it's actually probably good to have some things like that to kind of you know split split the bike and and, and vehicle traffic uh you know apart a little bit but um yeah next thing you're going to want to know we have a great airport great airport so if you're a traveler this is going to be a huge plus for you if you have to travel it's going to be a huge plus for you yeah portland's ranked uh consistently or pdx uh the airport is consistently ranked as the top airport in the country um i think that same list most recently it was ranked like second or third you know but it's always in the top five of, of those top 10 lists and uh, there's a lot of reasons why uh, probably most important, though, uh, for somebody moving to Portland is just the accessibility and the proximity. Um, even if you're in some of the furthest away suburbs, you could probably get to PDX in 30 minutes, depending on traffic. Um, and so, yeah, if you're going to be traveling for work a lot, um, or if you have family, you know, that's that's going to be coming in, friends, you know, coming to visit, things like that, um, you know, it, it's just going to be pretty easy for them to get to you or for you to go pick them up. Um, and it's not like, you know, some cities where you have to drive either, you know, an hour and a half in traffic or drive 30 or 45 miles to get to the airport. PDX is right in Northeast Portland, um, and it's really easy to get to. Great restaurants, too. Yeah, the food. I mean, it's... You know, a lot of restaurants uh, or a lot of airports rather that you go to it's, it's a lot of fast food um, which is fine you know we've probably all eaten our fair share of fast food at you know guilty, guilty. yeah <laughs> airports and you know paid 20 bucks for a you know whatever for a burger or something but the food actually with PDX they actually have local restaurants uh, in in PDX so you actually have some really good restaurants like exclusively yeah right yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so if, if you uh, have a layover, if you have to hang out in there for a while, it's, it's probably one of the better airports that you can hang out in the country. Yeah, um, every restaurant in there, and there's, there's a ton of them. Um, it's not a huge airport, but, uh, yeah. you know, for, for everything that they have in there to offer, uh, you know, it's all local restaurants that are kind of, you know, a little more popular or familiar, you know, to Portland. Um, and, you know, you just get better options. Uh, and all the shops in there, too, are uh, like local vendors, um, you know, where you can get a lot of good souvenirs, you know, things that are, there's like a, there's a, actually a store called Made in Oregon that you can find in a lot of the different malls around the Portland area. Um, they have that in, 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 the, in PDX as well. Yeah. So there's five gates. And right. Here's your airport hack. So when, when, you, uh, when you have your gate, so you have A, B, C, D, E, and A, B, C are together, and when you're going to the airport, they're gonna to be to your left, there's a long hallway, uh, D and E are gonna to be to the right. Uh, oftentimes, A, B, and C are busier. Um, either or could be busier though, but what you can do is, say you have uh, gate A uh, on your ticket, and you have to go through gate A, and that line is really, really, really long, but the D and E side is short, what you can do is you can go through another gate, you can go through the D, and then there's a back side uh, where you can walk back to the other gates. And it's like a five minute, four minute walk. It's, it's real quick, so. Yeah, they have those uh, moving runways. Right, the flat escalators. Yeah, the, the don't escalate. Right, well, whatever it is, uh, you know, you can walk on it, stand on it, whatever, it's gonna move for you. Uh, it's, it's a pretty, you know, it's, it's a pretty long distance, but you know, that speeds things up yeah. a little bit. But I, I've done that several times. It comes in handy. I can buy you 20 or 30 minutes, depending on how long the lines yeah. are. And, and the lines usually, I mean, in my experience, maybe I've just been lucky, but they're not that bad. Uh, I've, cut, I've, I've cut it close quite a bit. Yeah, yeah I've, I've uh, yeah, probably cut it close too many times for sure. And 
Well, when you go into Portland, it usually doesn't matter that much just because it's just not terribly busy. Yeah. But if it is, and you see that one side has fewer, like significantly fewer people, let's say there's a little less people, then it doesn't really matter, just go to your gate. But if you see like the D and E side, there's like almost nobody there, and the ABC side is packed, go through the D gate, and then walk around the back to the back side of uh, the gate that you want to go to, your A gate. Works every time. Yep. Um, I guess an another thing that's worth noting uh, for PDX is the long-term parking and short-term parking are really close and really convenient. Yeah. Uh, there's shuttles for the long-term parking, but there's also some long-term parking in the garage that's connected um, to uh, to the airport. So um, I've been to several airports around the country where some of the long-term parking is like a 15-minute shuttle ride, you know, to the airport and. You know, with, with travel times and, you know, trying to make your flight and all that, I mean, you know, that can really add up for days that you are traveling. It's just a lot easier uh, flying out of Portland. Yeah, for sure. All right. What do we got next? Uh, things to do. Things to do? Now, we've talked about, you know, a fair amount of things that might not necessarily affect whether or not somebody's going to decide to want to move to this area. This is probably, I would say, the biggest one or, or one of the bigger ones for sure. Um, just because there are so many things to do. We've got the mountain, which is just over an hour away, Mount Hood, uh, which is the, I believe, the most climbed mountain in uh, North America. That sounds right, yeah. Um, you know, skiing, snowboarding. And then you've got uh, the, the coast, just about an hour, hour and a half, hour and 15, depending on where you're coming from. Yeah, I gotta stop to you the there. west. Because, uh, you know, it's very- We like to say it's an hour, but it's like an hour and a half. It's very common to hear, uh, it's, you know, you got the mountain an hour away and you got the beach an hour yeah. away, so. Wine country an hour uh, away. Yeah, wine country an hour away. I mean, everything's an hour away. Um, and, you know, which, if you wanted to, uh, you know, drive 100 miles an hour with no traffic, you know, sure, you can you can get to some of these places in an hour. Like Seth said, it's probably more like 90 minutes, yeah. maybe even a couple hours, depending on where you're going. Um, so, I mean. You catch some bad traffic on the mountain sometimes, it can. Yeah, especially in the winter when it's most popular. I mean, you know, the the highway can be covered in, in snow and ice and you know you got to put chains on you got you to go 35 miles an hour um, you know it, it can be pretty slow but the point being obviously is we have all this great um, you know natural beauty and accessible uh, you know kind of outdoor activities just you know an hour away yeah so I mean there's, there's just no, no shortage of stuff to do too and, and you can go we, we have um, we have you know we have the desert as well in, in yeah. central and, and southeastern Oregon, you know, so you can go from desert to mountain to coast. I, it, it's kind of like the uh, the food and uh, wine and beer thing in that we just, we have this combination of things that like nobody else really has. Um, maybe like a Seattle or something like that is going to be similar. Yeah, I mean our but. geographical positioning is definitely very unique and allows for, you know, so many outdoor activities. Um, you know, if you're coming from the Midwest or the East, I mean, there's you just no don't get else it. Like, like yeah. this. And if you're not into, you know, things that are more extreme, like snowboarding or surfing or you know things where, uh, you know, I guess the you know the action sports or extreme sports. I mean, go for a hike. Still go just for, go hang out. Go for a walk. Go camping. Yeah. I mean, you can get out to some of these areas like the coast and up on the mountain. You drive up there for an afternoon, have lunch, come home. You know, yeah. and it's super easy to do. Just drive up to the mountain, go to the lodge, you know, watch the skiers, sit by the fire. Yeah. Or the same thing at the beach. You drive to make a little day trip to the beach. I mean, there's a lot of little day trip places around here. So if yeah. you don't have anything to do, you can just up and just go. Yeah. I think one thing you won't hear, though, because um, you hear a lot about this stuff, and, and I'm sure if you're thinking about moving to Portland, you know, you're, you're kind of familiar with, um, you know, some of those things that the area offers, but probably what you won't hear as much is that, you know, these places can get crowded. Um, it, you know, these aren't hidden gems necessarily. So, you know, some of the more popular destinations, whether it be on the mountain or the coast or a winery and wine country, um, generally, you know, if it's summer, winter, you know, kind of the high seasons for these different areas, um, there's gonna be long lines, a lot of traffic, a lot of people can get very crowded, uh, but you know, kind of added to that point though is for every area that is more popular, you know, there's probably dozens of areas that are a little more yeah. off the beaten path that you for can sure. get to and, and have your privacy. So yeah. it's not really until you get here and start exploring a little bit where you kind of find the areas that you like most. And you know, although some places can get crowded, you can find some places that 
yeah. you know, are, are, are a little more private too. Hood River, an hour away. Yeah. Windsurfing capital of the world. Yeah. I mean, there, again, there's just no shortage of stuff to do here. So yeah, I, the Columbia River Gorge overall. I mean, yeah, a lot beautiful. of hikes. Yeah. Waterfalls. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think that is a, a reason why a lot of people are attracted to this area. It's just no shortage of things to do. It's beautiful. Lakes, rivers. I mean, just every anything that you could want. Glaciers. I mean, just, yeah. just about anything that you could you could possibly want. Yeah, and I'd say on that point too is uh, you know the Portland metro area is um, you know it's not you know it doesn't have as much sprawl as like a Phoenix or some places in the country that you know are you know 30 miles you know you can go 30 miles in any direction from the city center and still be kind of in the metro area. Um, but yeah, that's true. Uh, where you yeah, but where you live in the metro area, you know, is going to make some of these different areas uh, more accessible than others. So yep. on the west side, you have like Beaverton and Hillsboro, where you, you probably can get to the coast in an hour, yeah. um, but you're, you know, you're you looking at an extra 30 minutes to get to the mountain. Where, you know, similarly, if you're in like, you know, uh, uh, a Westland, a Clackamas, you know, out in Gresham, somewhere on the east, uh, you know, kind of further east or closer to highways where you're not fighting through traffic to get out of town. Yeah. Um, you can get to the mountain a lot quicker, but it might take longer to get to the coast. So, yeah. you know, that's something that we can talk about when you're looking at different areas is how, you know, how quickly you can get to either the mountain, the coast, or any of the other things that you might be, you know, that you might want to be close to. Yeah, yeah, we can find that perfect place for you for sure, whether it's you know, south, west, east, you know, whatever it may be. All right, so... Um, Moving on? Yeah, I think uh, we've got... I think we've got a bonus now, our last one. That's right. Gas. Yeah. So, Oregon is one of two states in the country where it's actually illegal to pump your own gas. Illegal. Yeah, so, uh, uh, I've never heard of anybody getting a ticket for it. No, or... I've done it. Yeah. I've pumped my own gas. And there's actually some counties uh, in the state, some of the more rural counties, where um, they make exceptions to that rule for whatever reason, but um, either way, uh, it, it's funny enough, the, the law was enacted in, uh, I think, 1945, and what's cited as the reasoning is uh, the weather, the rain, because there might be liability if people are getting out of their car, they might slip in the rain. So I know we said the rain wasn't that bad, but, you know, it's bad enough, I guess, uh, to where we're not allowed to pump our own gas. And but. to be clear, I think pretty much everywhere you might get gas is covered. Yeah, maybe right. not in 1945, but all the gas stations <laughs> now are, you know, yeah, there's are, no, are covered. You're not going to get rained on when you step out of your car and get gas. So maybe a little bit of, of an antiquated rule at this point. But I think yeah. it probably creates, you know, a fair amount of jobs uh, around the state. So that's a good thing. Um, you don't have to get out of your car. You probably pay for it a little bit uh, at the pumps. Um, gas is more expensive here. Gas is more expensive yeah. here. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, I, guess, I guess another thing too, uh, something that I hear uh, a lot of people ask who are moving in from out of state is, do we have to tip somebody who's pumping uh, pumping my gas? And um, that, that's certainly not uh, expected. No, it's not expected. Some places won't accept tips either too. If it's mm -hmm. like a, a Fred Meyer or a Safeway, or probably a Costco. Um, but if you go to like a you know a whatever a BP, a Chevron, an Arco, those those people will uh, take tips. Yes. So if if, uh, if you're moving to Portland or if you're moving to Oregon, and you go to a gas station and you know some strange man approaches your window, um, starts touching your car and asks you for money, don't be alarmed. That's just how we do things around here. And and actually sometimes uh, they will wash your windows too, which is nice. And yeah, those have probably been the few times that I have tip. Is like somebody washed my windows. Um, I, I know I've given people tips here and there if they wash my windows, so, you know, because that's always nice. They usually ask, they don't usually just come up and start washing them, but they'll ask if you want. And, it, and it's, it's, I don't know, it seems like it's more a little bit in the rural areas that I've, I've, I've had that. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's washed my windows, like around downtown Portland. Yeah, that's more of an exception to the norm, probably. Yeah, it is an exception. It's not very common, which would, you know, is what prompted me to, you know, make an exception and, and make it, and tip somebody as well, too. You're a nice guy. Well, I try to be. <laughs> All right, well, I, I think that concludes uh, our list of uh, 11 things and a bonus that you want to know when you're moving to Portland, Oregon. Yeah, there's there's so many things that we can talk about. And, you know, if you are considering moving to the Portland area, um, 
uh, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon to get notified every time that we drop a new video because we're going to do a lot of videos like this talking about things that you've heard about uh, and maybe give you our kind of uh, homegrown perspective on it. Um, and we're going to talk about a lot of things that you probably haven't heard about uh, or haven't considered yet uh, when it comes to living in the Portland area. Yeah, so subscribe like Paul said and we're going to show you some stuff that you might not be able to see or hear or find anywhere else. That's going to be the type of content that you'll expect with this channel. If you're thinking about moving right now or would like to talk to us, you can give us a call, send us a text, or shoot us an email. All of the contact information is in the description below. There's also a link for our calendar if you'd like to schedule a Zoom with us, which for a lot of people coming from out of state, that's, you know, that's usually where we would start, is uh, do a Zoom, get to know each other, figure out what's important to you, and then start from there. Yep, yep. All right. Well, until next time, cheers. Take care, everybody.